Hello? One, two, three, And if it Rel. looks like a Les Paul, and it smells like a Les Paul, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a Les Paul. Does it smell like a Les Paul? Does it Les Paul? Uh, mm. It's not got the odor Les Paul that certain Les Pauls have, no. has it? This you, this you make a fragrance this is more, called uh, Les, yes. Les, Les What's Les it? Paul. It's, it's more of like the eau de toilette as opposed to the perfume, isn't it? I think. Anyway, welcome back. Pete and I have been on holiday <laughs> for a week, not together. Um, but you know, we're close, but close actually. Yes, quite yeah, close. Yeah. Um, and we're back. Uh, although you've probably not had a break from the, you know, that's been videos anyway. Like yes. we never left <laughs> the never ending stream. <laughs> uh, and today in, uh, this fresh new video for us, we thought we would grab a couple of guitars that came out last year. Um, but every time I, we do a Les Paul video, uh, you remind us in the comments section that we haven't done a proper review yeah. of the 1959 Epiphone Les Paul reissue. And we didn't, they were in and out of the shop and then it gets sold and they let's do the video and they, there's nobody left there. But now we've got them. Yes. So, so this is basically a top of the range Epiphone Les Paul. Oh. Uh, they retail in the UK at 749, yeah. come with a beautiful hard case, which perhaps we'll do a sweep of the guitar mm. in the hard case over, very much as, as kind of an, like an Epiphone version of the hard case that a 59 custom shop Les Paul would come in. Yeah, it goes straight in um, the uh, loft or the garage. Yeah, you're not a big hard case fan, are you, Pete? Man, and I if agree. You, if you've got 50 guitars and you've got 50 hard cases, where are you going to put all those put hard them? cases? Well, what think about Anderson's. We've got about 700 guitars on display. <laughs> Cost me an arm and a leg just to rent somewhere to put the cases. I mean, it's, anyway. it, it is insane. Anyway. Right. But uh, specs-wise, we the, the major differences between this and perhaps the you know the, the Epiphone Les Paul standard is this aged finish. So it's still a kind of a, a, a polyurethane finish. We're not in the sort of the realms of the nitro yet, but it, they call it aged. And it, it's like a satin finish designed to sort of give it that slightly more worn in look and feel. Um, and you've got the burst bucker uh, two and three pickups on here, yeah. which are American made. 
and basically, you know, have been used on various Gibson Les Pauls uh, over the years. Currently, I think the closest would be something like a Gibson Les Paul Standard 50s has the burst bucker one and two. Uh, mm -hmm. So just basically the same pickup, but marginally, marginally less hot than these. Hot, hot. Um, it's got, it says here as well, it's got all of the, you know, Les Paul standard outfit. So you've got, you know, your, your uh, CTS, yep. pot, potentiometer, switchcraft, toggle, jet, well, all of the vintage goodness inside this as well. Yeah. Did they bring this out when they did the um, Epiphone acoustics? Was that a thing they started putting on those? This uh, is the same kind of finish that's on it? the Jared James Nichols that's right. Les Paul. That's right, yeah. Uh, might have been used on, on acoustics. I think they did I'm the acoustics. I'm not 100% sure. The same kind of... Anyway. Other, other than that, though, again, you know, the, the body is obviously a mahogany. It's a solid mahogany body. You've got yeah. the, the maple top. Uh, on the Epiphone guitars, they're still using a laurel fingerboard because of course rosewood hasn't really uh begun to be reused terribly commonly on far eastern made guitars mahogany neck bound got the clues and vintage style tuners yeah. which are very cool kind of period correct the nice limited edition badge on the yeah. back of the switch cavity and i think you get a, an extra if you don't like this on do there, you because i know you do on, on the custom shop yes. on the anniversary stuff don't you but now as you can hear in as you heard sorry in that opening jam it's a great it. sounding guitar, yeah. right? It does all the things that I thought it would do in terms of, you know, the big, fat, rich sound on the rhythm pickup, the more bitey sound on the treble pickup. I was dialing tones back. It was doing all the things. No, go on. You, well, look. No, you play. You all play. Right. You, I always play. So I interestingly play. as well in this video, me play. It, entirely because I had to take my uh, expensive pedal board somewhere uh, and I totally forgot I'd taken it there and forgot to bring it back. So in today's video, and this is quite interesting, I'm using the pedal board that I made in our ultimate budget pedal board video, which yeah. you can watch if you click up here. Oh! And so if I, you are clicking around, please like and subscribe. Please do. And then it like, means a and lot. Hit the thing to and us. do the stuff and um, yes. And Pete's got not just his expensive pedal board, but like his expensive pedal board with an extra expensive pedal. Yeah, I've there. added the uh, Cornerstone Gladio there. Uh, so, so now I've got one pedal here, it's more than your pedal board. I think you've got one pedal on that board that costs more than my whole board, and, and, and the whole board is like 10 times more than my board. So <laughs> if, really if you ridiculous. thought we sounded similar in the opening jam, I guess the question is, are expensive pedals worth it? Um, hey ho, of course. If That's you a thought, good video. If you thought Pete sounded way better, then you've answered that question. He's also a way better guitar player. Oh, um, right, so Sans pedals keep, so straight into that. my Victory uh, V140, which in fairness is still a jolly expensive amplifier, so I it's like jolly. that. But it's clean and it's just kind of clean and valvey transparent, so it's a great demo amplifier yeah. for this. Fat's got girth, Fat. hasn't it? Just it's got, got girth. <laughs> Not enough people get into the, the tone and volume controls on their Les Paul. You really can. There's a lot the of tones there. Uh, sorry, it's interrupted. Joe Banamasa does, does. He did a video for where's the guitar? Oh, there's something where he's about where, 10 million views he's now. He's straight it? into uh, like Lacey J M or something, and he's doing everything. His, well, and it's just what his thing and i don't know if this is he changes kind of his rig from time to time but for a long time and i think potentially still now he was very much of the school of thought that you took an old school valve amplifier dimed it so yeah. just everything as loud as it would go Dime back and then literally just take the the volume on your les paul back a couple of notches so that it didn't uh, hit the amp with quite so much load and he, he was saying it was allowed it to sort of bloom a bit more but um, he's back to his big setup now it's he, with, his, with his you know dumbbells and I saw uh, him it's just at the Albert Hall maybe three or four crazy. years ago and we got free tickets from Gibson thanks very much <gasps> I, I was didn't. totally totally assuming that we'd be up in the gods somewhere like where the free tickets go and we were front row at the Albert Hall literally on the side that Joe Bonamassa's amps were on. It was monstrous show. What a yeah. player. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Keeps. Anyway, anyway. Yeah. So that was the, anyway, I didn't, even, that, that was, I didn't even get past the, the rhythm. So this is when you combine the two, the rhythm and the treble. What's Sorry, every time I hear those chords now. I can't help. I was oh, just I thinking about just... the new John West song. I mean, we're not going to go you, there. You and Every everyone. time we play, wah, wah, like, oh, here we go again. Sorry. 
We didn't really talk about the neck carve. Again, on the, the 59 here, they've tried to copy a classic 59 neck carve. So it's kind of like a slim to medium uh, vibe neck, 12 inch radius. So again, it's all very Les Paul. You know, it's not trying to be like a modern take on a Les Paul. It's, it's a vintage spin. Yeah. You buy the modern one um, if you want a modern take on the Yeah, if Les you want Paul. coil taps and all that kind of stuff, this is not the guitar for no. you, you know. Treble pickup. So rich and harmonic that, you know, a Les Paul tone is. So yeah. if for some gain, I mean, I've got a funny little setup here on my board. I've kind of got a, a Magus by TC, which is a rat style pedal, which is, you know. And then what I was using was a was a Tone City Sweet Cream and the Tone City Comp engine to give it. So, uh, there you see yeah. a selection of tones, so, you know, reasonably gainy. I mean, what else? Les Paul's been used by everybody over the years, hasn't it? From, yeah. you know, from Les Paul himself doing sort of jazzy lines through to Slash and way heavier players than him. Clapton, obviously, through all the blues breakup years. Peter Green. I um, mean, it's, yeah. it's a pointless list because it would be forever long. Uh, forever, man. Forever, um, I want to so, be forever long. <laughs> that's, that's this guitar. And it's £750. Yeah. Uh, well spent, in my opinion. I, I, I would agree. Listen. I mean, you can't go wrong. If two you, colours. If you, two colours, yeah. If Which, you, interestingly, you, sorry to kind of crush you there, Pete, fine. just these were the two original yeah. colours that were made on the on the, the Les Paul in 1959. Yeah. I mean, um, it is, if you're looking to get, you know, if you don't have now either £350,000 to buy an original 59 or however half a million or however much that they are, or, you know, something like this, yep. which we're going to come to in a minute, which is about five... Is it plus five plus grand? Or like, uh, you know? I don't think you'd find many. Most 58s is, now are sort of four to five. This is Gibson Custom Shop. Yeah, four to good. five grand for a 58 and five to six grand for a 59. And then upwards if you want, you know, Relicking or... Um, uh, the Murphy Lab stuff. Yeah. So, oh, you know, so this is a great... And, you know, if you, and if, you, if you don't have the means to, to get a, let's put, you know, a normal list poll, 50s or whatever, yeah, what, 2300 kind of thing? You know? Yeah, so, so this so, is great value for money. I really. I, I quite like this sort of. We, I think it's the great. idea is we're going to do a kind of a blindfold comparison mm. between the 59 by Gibson Custom Shop and the Epiphone. But we're not. We're, uh, before we started shooting this video, we, the origin, originally the idea was to blindfold Pete and go, can you tell the difference between which if you're playing it? Yeah. And because the satin finish on the Epiphone is so different to the gloss nitro finish on the back of yeah. the. Um, the custom shop. It was almost a pointless. It's too easy because to tell. Yeah, it's just like you can you immediately can you go. Yeah. I know. So what we decided to get do, the guitar in your, in your lap. Yeah, I'll blindfold me. Pete will play, and I've got to see if I can guess which is the one sound wise. And to make it even harder, I'm going to be using Telecaster. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say to make it even harder. Let's not plug that one in until I've got it, the yeah. blindfold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I said, I just plugged I'm, them in earlier and I must have been, there, there are, you know, yeah, you can tell the difference, absolutely. Well, pickups um, wise, they are different. So of yeah. course in the 59, all the custom shop range use a slightly ambiguously named uh, custom bucker, which basically gives Gibson license to kind of Gibson. wind the pickup however Gibson. they want Gibson. to, to um, recreate the period of guitar that they're trying to, to, to make. Yeah. So sometimes when you see the word custom bucker, it doesn't, that's not, that doesn't necessarily mean all custom bucker pickups are the same. They certainly aren't. Um, so, 
You're in to... comes through the power of uh, the delivery pigeon. Here it comes. Do you like our new attire as well, by the way? We have yeah, yeah. a whole new range of colours of Anderton's t shirts. I mean, I, I of course, wore the colour that was popping the most. <laughs> you pick the uh... one that matches your personality. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so here Ready? we go, Lee. Here's okay. number, guitar number one. You nearly said what it was, didn't you? No, I said guitar number one. <laughs> this is guitar number one. Okay, so that's clean. Straight into the Got amp. It. Okay, so yeah. here's number two on the neck pickup. Switch back really quickly. Guys, you need to play switch. along here. If you have, I mean, obviously, you know, re rewind. When I cross a ball, so oh, it's too late now to say that, isn't it? But you should just look, don't look at the screen whilst Pete's playing and see if you can work you it can, out yeah. too. Okay, so here we, we, I'm going back to the neck pickup mm. now on the other guitar. That's everything on full. Mm -hmm. I'm going back to the other guitar. Okay, now I'm putting in a bit of gain on from the day. Just a On the bridge pickup. Okay, that's, there was a little bit of gain there from the Dane on the bridge pickup. You're gonna get the same on the other one. from the other one. E1. <laughs> I mean that that should be enough really. Okay. okay. It? So this uh, is number so I, so I think whatever you I mean again what please. I'm playing now what could it be? You just you just I think what you're playing there. now is the epiphone and what you played before there, I mean, please, I've got to say, this is a, this is a, this is a largely a guess, but with maybe one or two things that I think I can hear. So yeah, the one I, hear. the one I think is, I know what it is the, the Gibson seems a little bit more open and a slightly wider spectrum of frequencies. The one that I think is the Epiphone sound a little bit darker and a little bit more compressed, maybe. Could you just do a... You want I'm, some, some soft I playing wanna, stuff, a little bit of gain, but just some bit, soft. I want to sustain, want, I, want to, I, want okay. the, I want the 12th fret or like the, you know, the sort of yeah. 15th fret uh, B the... string bend, you know. So, so that's, that's, that's guitar number two, was it? Uh, yes. Okay, so that's the one I currently think is the Epiphone. Yeah. And let's see if let's guitar see. number one <coughs> can do the same. Try to put it 
put a little bit of compression on there so maybe it gets a bit more sustaining. Quickly back it's to the other sound. one. That it's a it. good sound. It's a good sound. I tell you, if guitar number one is the Epiphone, then that is a killer sounding guitar. But okay, I'm still going with number. This is the other this one. Is I mean, the pedals now, you've got a Origin effect, you've got a Gladio that, and a Dane together. Again, that one that you were playing, I think on the vibrato, on the upper notes, again, it's just slightly more scratchy sounding. Yeah, I think... So, can I... Yeah, you can, you that's, can, yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. So, what so about, just for right. clarity, you're one right. was the Gibson, two was yeah. the Epiphone, right? Yeah, so the, the one I... The, I just swap, swapped them over, but you, you hear, you're hearing exactly what it is. I'm also hearing... I'm also... I don't know if you can hear that. Can no, you hear those? There may be a little bit of this setup on this guitar is really beautiful. You know, right. it's just it's playing wise, it's 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 it should be better to play. Yeah. You know, but you can. This just needs a little. It comes straight out of the box. We literally take them out of the box. It, it, I mm. I would have this set up before I. I think but that's. If, is that fair to say? Well, that, I, you know? I do. I, I kind of feel now. Of course, the argument is, you know, should you expect the, the factory to do that? Should you expect the shop to do that? Or should you be expected to do it yourself? I mean, I'm not saying it's bad. No, that's I, not I think what I'm saying. I'm, I think the reality is, you have to accept that the cheaper the guitar becomes, the less time there is to to focus yeah. on very labor-intensive parts like the final setup. Or just strings. I mean, I've just yeah. put a new fresh set of, so, of, of more. But you know, I don't know what strings is on here, but. Yeah. You know, it feels I, to me like you I do agree. Do better with I, the I think you could take any guitar, probably a thousand or fifteen hundred pound or less, and yeah. perhaps more so. It becomes more obvious when you get down to sort of say five hundred or less than that. Yeah. And just before you, the the best, 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 the best. 50, 60 pounds that you can spend is to go and take it to yeah. a luthier and say, can you stick some new strings on it and just give it the once over because it will improve its playability substantially. Yeah. But I mean, even these sometimes can benefit from that, you know, because they'll get in and out of the room, well, there might guitar, be air conditioning and, you know, it'll, the you, neck will yeah, be a little sure. bit different. And if, you, if you own a guitar for, you know, 10 years, I, I, you know, you'd expect to want to service that yeah. five, you, six times during You that play that years. quick. I think you need to play that. It's um, a lot lighter, isn't it, as well? This it's a super the, light guitar. My, that guitar... If you ask, that is one of the one of the best fifty nines I've played. Sixty anniversaries. Uh, it, it's really, yeah. really a nice guitar. I mean, it is a super, super guitar, isn't yeah. it? But they all, look. And they, they, so this you, is that's it now. I mean, when was the last time you played a bad custom shop? You know, like, uh, yeah, you, you're right. You're right. But that is very nice. It's just something. It, again, it immediately <laughs> feels like a guitar that you've had for a while that you just want to play. Yeah as opposed to a guitar that you go, I'm sure, you know, if I had that set up and I had it for a few months, I'd get bang into it. Well, it's almost £6,000 less or £5,000 oh, less. You can't, you know, it, it, you, you know, but is that, is that enough to, hmm. to justify the money, you know? It's not in the... I mean, I think when you play a guitar, that 1% that the audience struggles to hear becomes like 10%, doesn't it? It becomes, when you're playing, it yeah. becomes much easier to sort of... Probably get a couple of cool, that, nice pickups, but if you be, want to. But. You know, again, a lot of people say that nitro finish is just, you know, again, makes the guitar a bit more open and resonant, you know. I mean, this is where we set the world on fire again by arguing like this, but you know what I mean? As I know in, exactly I think... what you mean, Lee. Uh, but I would say, I would say, you know, it, if you if you have the money and you want to tweet yourself, go for it. If, if you, you know, if you don't, then these are great.
But compare, it's, do you have a little play compared to? I, I do. I mean, again, this is a guitar that I'm instantly going, yeah. I don't know. This is this is a bucket list guitar, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. No, go, on, go on. Have a play a bit, and let's see what you think when you play them. Well, I mean, I, I, I kind of feel like we've we've demonstrated that done there's it? a you know there's like a there is a difference, but it's a tiny difference in the sound. Um, and you know, yet again, as we probably demonstrate over and over and over again, you can't go well. This is ten times the price, but it's not you know. Therefore, it should be ten times better. It just doesn't work like that no. at all. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, and of course, with a guitar, tone is only one part of it. You know, feel, balance, looks. Um, I always say you have to. Stuff. You have to. When you look at a guitar like this, you're going to want to pick it up. In one, if you need to be inspired by the guitar. I mean, look. Yeah. I know. mean, look. You don't. You don't get tops look at like this. Look at the top on that man. It's I know. Gorgeous. And I mean, the neck on. Is it that neck on uh, this one? That's got a nice. It's got a little bit of flame in that. Yeah, it? that's that one there. It's got a flame yeah. in the neck. Flame in neck. Well, look, I said... We're rambling now, Lee. We're We're rambling, uh, as always, um, you know, you guys... Close. You know, just what do you think in the comments section? Is there any of these yeah. other sort of shootouts that you'd like us to do? Sorry. Oh, I, don't know I, I mean, again, I always kind of think we've done them in the past. Maybe we'll revisit. But things like Squire, Classic Vibe versus Custom Shop. Very... I think we need to revisit them yeah. just to update the whole thing. I think know? we'll get similar results. I think you'll go, I'm pretty sure that's the Custom Shop and that's the Squire. But you know it'll be marginal, yeah. and you'll and the whole debate will come down to is it worth ten times as much or not? Uh, I mean that's about the you know a, a yeah, custom shop strat that's is about ten times a Squire Classic vibe. Same. Yeah. I and mean, this isn't quite ten times this, but it's you know. a piece of wood with a piece Look of wood it, on it. Man. I do still. I'm going to say this again because I've said it like a hundred times. I do wish that Epiphone would just put the Gibson headstock on their Les Paul. You know, it's like they kind of, they kind of. They changed it, it to make it. it almost, but I'm a bit like, why not just why do it exact? Do it exactly the same, um, yeah. Why not? It's not that different though now, is it? Look. No. What can I say? It's just, you know, if This you're... is a great guitar for the money. And this, this is looks just cool. a great guitar. And that's just a great guitar, but it'll cost you <laughs> half an arm and half a leg or whatever you well, say. Well, thank you very much, Pete, as thank always, you, for your stupendous playing. Oh, um, yeah, you ripping off today, man. In that intro, that's what there. happens. I take so a week we, off, and take then a week off, and you can't stop. It all comes back out of me, and one we go, need to... I'll be absolutely useless in the next video. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, another thing, please, if you uh, have some of these shootouts that we, you would like us to do, if, if you're still watching, by the way, the one guy who's still watching the end of this video, uh, please comment and say, well, we'd like to have a shootout with the. Um, I would like to shoot that out with the uh, Murphy Labs. We could go I mean, full ball, Les Paul, couldn't we? Could do, could. could do Epiphones versus Standard USA versus Custom versus Murphy Labs. We do the whole thing. Hey, it's such a tough yeah. job, but someone's got to do it. And on that note, everybody, we'll say goodbye, and we shall see you in another video very soon. Au revoir. <laughs> Pardon me.